All right, section seven of chapter four are, is trends in the periodic table. And what this means is like how, if we look at a periodic table, does this specific property change going across a row of the periodic table or going down a group of the periodic table? Is there a pattern that is repeated? And almost always there is a pattern. First one here is atomic size, AKA how big is the atom? What is the radius of the atom? And you can see with this picture here that the atoms tend to get smaller as you go left to right on the periodic table. This might seem counterintuitive. Lithium has um, three protons, three electrons, and probably three neutrons. Beryllium, on the other hand, is going to have four protons, four electrons, four neutrons. So you might think that it would be bigger. The reality is, though, that this isn't the case. If we look at a lithium atom, it's going to look something like this. And yeah, it has three electrons. And what happens is there's something called a nuclear, effective nuclear charge. And it's going to be the difference in the number of electrons in total minus the number of shielding electrons. And the shielding electrons in lithium are the inner two electrons right here that I've highlighted in blue. So the effective nuclear charge for lithium, which is written as Z EFF, or Z effective, where Z is the atomic number, is going to be equal to three minus those two shielding electrons, which will equal one. If you look at beryllium, on the other hand, it's got two inner core electrons again, which are both shielding. So the Z effective for beryllium is going to be 4 minus 2, which equals 2. So therefore, those two outer or valence electrons in beryllium experience a charge twice as strong from the nucleus that the one valence electron in lithium does. And therefore, they get pulled in closer to the nucleus, which makes the atoms smaller. And this, um, this property is going to repeat going across the periodic table. So the valence electrons are more attracted to the nucleus, pulling them in more. making the atoms smaller. Even though it has more protons, more electrons, more neutrons, it's still going to be smaller. And the same thing would happen for boron, where boron would have the Z effective of being 5 minus 2 which would be three. So again, a higher effective nuclear charge, attracting the electrons even more, making that atom smaller. As you go down a group of the periodic table though, so let's look at lithium and sodium and potassium. We've already have lithium up there, but sodium 
would look like this. Okay, so we've got the two first energy level electrons. There's eight in the second energy level, and then there's one in the valence shell. So the Z effective for this is going to be 11 minus, you would count these all up, there's 8 plus 2 is 10. equals 1. The Z effective for lithium was also 1. Since they have the same effective nuclear charge, and sodium has more protons, neutrons, and electrons, it has to be bigger. And the same would repeat for potassium and rubidium. So going down the groups, you have the same effective nuclear charges for each of those elements. Even so, um, as the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons increases, they're going to get bigger. Ionization energy is the amount of energy required to remove a particular electron from an atom of the element. The values tend to increase going to the right across a row and they decrease going down a group. And this has to do ultimately with the size of the atom and again therefore the effective nuclear charge. So if we have a lithium atom which is um, bigger than a beryllium atom. Let me try to draw this as best I can. The outermost electrons for beryllium being closer to the nucleus they are going to be more tightly bound to the nucleus than the outer electron is for lithium And this makes it harder to remove. Now going down a group, the atoms are getting bigger, so the Electrons are further away from the nucleus and therefore less strongly or tightly bound to the nucleus and therefore easier to remove. So the ionization energy decreases. Metallic character increases going to the left across a row of the periodic table and increases down a group in the periodic table and therefore the most metallic element on the periodic table would be francium element 87, which is actually below cesium right there. It's in row seven. That would be the most metallic. And you can see up here in the same group is hydrogen, which is not a metal, because it's the metallic character has decreased so much going up this group that hydrogen is not even a metal. Metals are elements that lose electrons easily. They have a metallic luster to them. You, you, know, you know what that means. And they conduct electricity, they conduct heat, so on and so forth. All right, so in this lesson, I've talked about the atomic size and the trends on that periodic table. 
electron arrangements, energy levels, ionization energies, and the trends in the periodic table. Lewis symbols or dot structures, the trend of metallic character, and valence electrons. Now that we have finished chapter four, you should be able to do all of these problems in your book, so please go ahead and do them. Do the, all the problems on mastering chemistry, and um, that's it.